Well, the debate over the debate, somehow it is back. The Trump and Harris campaigns are clashing over their September 10th showdown on ABC, including whether the microphones will be muted. So Team Kamala wants them hot, hoping they can catch Trump losing his cool on the microphone. But Team Trump wants to keep them muted, as it was during the debate with Biden. It is quite the reversal for the vice president. Kamala Harris is attacking Trump for wanting to stick to the rules after her campaign bashed him as a coward for wanting those same rules to change back when Trump floated a new debate schedule after Biden dropped out. But earlier, the former president seemed to be like, that's cool, I'm fine, watch this. All of a sudden they want to make a change in the rules because she can't answer questions. We agreed to the same rules, I don't know, it doesn't matter to me, I'd rather have it probably on, but the agreement was that it would be the same as it was last time. In that case, it was muted. Uh, I didn't like it the last time, but it worked out fine. I'm not spending a lot of time on it. I think my whole life I've been preparing for a debate. Team Kamala responding on X with this, uh, saying, with this resolved, everything is now set for September 10th. But it is not just the mics. Trump is also accusing the debate host, ABC News, of political bias after this interview between Republican Senator Tom Cotton and ABC reporter Jonathan Carl. What do you mean taking away health insurance? What are you talking about? She said when she ran for president that she wants to eliminate private health insurance on the job. Well, 170 well, million Americans, John. Yeah, I mean, I mean that, that is not her position now. She knows. How do you know that's not her position? Medicare, How do you know that's not her position? I mean, she she says she no longer she not supports said uh, she has not Medicare said that. for all. She has not said that. Okay. Maybe anonymous aides on a Friday night have said that. A lot to get to here. I thought Tom Cotton did a pretty good job with like no notes, just off the top of his head, ready to go. But judge, in a negotiation, when you have a deal. And let's just say a new party comes in mm -hmm. and they accept that deal. Mm -hmm. Then who I don't think it's right then to try to change the rules. But I don't know from a negotiation standpoint, what do you think the Trump team should do? Um, well, I think the Trump team has already done what they need to do. And he basically said, OK, you can have the, the new mic on or off. You know, he okay. just said, I don't care. I'll do it anywhere. But it's interesting. I'm not sure in terms of like contractual things, whether it's in the name of the Democrat Party or the Biden campaign or the Biden Harris campaign, where he is presumed the principal for her as the agent. Right. But I'm not going to go into that right now, Harold. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but I got to tell you something. What's very interesting to me about this whole thing is I think she wants the mute button off. Because if you recall, one of the most viral moments that we remember from one of her rallies was when she said, I'm speaking. And I think she really wants to have the ability to say that again and to stop Trump and say, I'm speaking. So I right, because she said it to the Palestinian protesters. Exactly, like to those like protesters. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, but I also think that the fact that the mainstream media is covering uh, for Kamala and for her inability to come out and make statements about what she's standing for does a disservice not only to the media, but it also does a disservice to the independents. The independents who are looking for policy recommendations from Kamala. So on the one hand, they can say, oh, they love Kamala. She's all about joy and everything else. But there's that piece in the middle that's like, we want to know what you stand for before you actually think that we're going to vote for you. I also think there's another piece, and that is no confidence. I don't think Kamala Harris has confidence in herself. She came out and talked about price gauging, which I've never heard that word before. But when she talked about, she got panned on her economic policy from the left and the right. And I think that she doesn't have the, the, the ability and the confidence that we saw she lacked during the three and a half years when she was the vice president. And finally, I think that... Um, I don't think she can multitask. I think she's spending all of her time getting ready for the debate, and she's doing nothing else. And that's why she very much wants to do this. But at the same time, I think she's frightened as well. But in the meantime, Harold, we're waiting for this big interview, she said, is going to happen before the end of the month, which is the end of this week. Who's uh, it going to be? First of all, good is to be back Is it going to be you? Around. Are you getting the interview? Good to be back around this table. Ugh. If I do, I'll have you with me. The, uh, I am, uh, I've, I've said before, she has to do interviews, has to do debates. but. I agree 100% with what the judge just said. Um, and I'm going to add on to it. The pettiness from both of these campaigns about Mike's being on or Mike's being off, I remind them both, you're running for the privilege of serving us in the United States. Yeah. Ordinarily, campaigns get together. This is not some new phenomenon. You're not the, the most, you're not the only candidates we've had. Candidates teams get together and they settle on three debates. They bicker over who's going to get to do it with the networks, but now since everyone's simulcasting it, it's a little different. Um, 
We deserve to hear you talk about national security, economic growth, people's anxieties and aspirations, education, all the things, reproductive rights, all the things you want to talk about. You should have to stand side by side and do it three times. The fact that we're only talking about one now is an embarrassment and an affront to our system and to the people. Finally, get with it. Uh, we deserve it. We deserve better. Uh, and when the judge and I can agree on a Monday <laughs> afternoon, 100%, uh, either something's really wrong or, or something could be right. Or it's going to be a great week. Right. Yeah. Or something, and we could have a great week. Jesse, I think Harold just told them to get it together. I like what Harold said <laughs> about that, but I disagree on one thing. Yes, sir. I like the pettiness. Mm, I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> because the Presidential Commission on Debates was boring. Right. And now we got rid of it, and now both of these people have to negotiate the debate. Yep. And so we talk about bathroom breaks and drug testing, uh -huh. and this is kind of shows how a president would negotiate for our country. Really? And the art of the deal and <laughs> the kind of things that they care about and don't care about, and you get to see who has little savvy. She doesn't have it. She's only committed to one debate. She's scared of them. And actually... Jesse Jr. just texted me. He said, please tell Greg I want my shirt back. <laughs> <laughs> Can you ask, please tell Jesse Jr. not to put Band-Aids on your hands? Okay. Oh, this, was, this was Gigi's Band-Aid, because I think that's a girl Paw Patrol. So Paw Patrol. she says she wants to sit down. She says she wants Mike's unmuted, and she says she wants notes. So she wants to do everything differently than Joe notes. Biden did, right? And, and so she wants to be interrupted. She wants Trump to interrupt her because it never looks good when a man argues with a woman. Does it not? And interrupts a woman, <laughs> as I've been told many times when Jessica's <laughs> at the table. And I try not to, but she's going to try to snap back with sass, like the judge said, and have a moment. But why does she need notes? So debate prep yeah. probably is not going very well if her mm -hmm. team is now at the last second asking for notes. Mm -hmm. She has a big challenge because on this debate stage, she has to defend the Biden record. And then also say what she'd do differently. She has to defend her own record and now say what her new vision is, whatever that is. We don't know. And then she has to defend her role in the coup and the cover up. And then she has to somehow attack Donald Trump on the economy, immigration, foreign policy and crime. All areas, while by every metric, he has a much better record on. And, Dana, she has to do it with joy. Yes, yeah, so well, don't forget that. Which is very difficult. Greg, there's also a thing. Do you remember in 2012? Actually, we were uh, watching the debate together in 2012. Right, when Candy right. Crowley oh. helped mm. Obama against Romney, right? And then you saw Jonathan Carl. His instinct was to say, well, actually, that's not Kamala Harris's position anymore. And Senator Tom Cotton basically just hit that one out of the park, saying, how do you know that? And it's true, we, we don't know. I want to, I'll get to that in a second. Okay. It's a, I'm glad you brought that up, oh, though, Dana. You. And that's a lovely top. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> so that's how you do it, Jesse. Um, how, do you de how do you debate someone who is agreeing with every one of your policies? It's like playing tennis with the opponent on the same side as your <laughs> net. That's what Kamala is right now with Trump. She cannot dispute on any of those issues. Because how is he wrong on immigration? He's been proven right. Crime is on the right side. Inflation, he knows what he's doing. She's going to have to agree with him. So they're going to have to catch Trump. They're going to have to bring up hoaxes and mean tweets and all that stuff. To your, uh, to your point, which I hate saying, I'm not sure complaining about media bias really matters anymore at this point. Uh, and I think that should concern the media. Yeah. When people now just accept you as unre unreliable, corrupt garbage, that's bad. It's like being in a relationship, Jesse, and you know this. It's not fun when a spouse is upset with you, but it's worse when they no longer care enough to be angry. Mm. And that's how America is with the media. <laughs> they don't they're not even they're not even taking this seriously anymore. They've learned that this is fake. They understand that what they're doing is is manufactured for a, for a, a specific end. And to that end, it's kind of scary watching how this election unfolds. It's ex it's exactly how the media wants it to. What does their business model need? A really tight, razor thin yeah. race. What was it not like a month ago? It wasn't tight. It was there was a big gap between Trump and Biden, and then all of a sudden Harris comes in miraculously. No interviews, no pressers, no policy positions. It's razor tight. It's going right down to the wire. The media is like a pharmaceutical company. 
right? They need you on maintenance therapy. And you can only do that if you convince them there is a reason to tune in. A blowout gives you no reason to watch the news. But a tight race, that keeps them in business. They're just like a drug. You ever wonder why in a population of 300, 400 million at this point, it always comes down to this margin of 300,000 votes in key states? It's so evenly split in the United States. Even when most of America is pissed off about food prices, illegal immigration, crime, and they don't like the past four years, yet it's still razor thin. Th that defies logic. It defies your senses. It shouldn't be down the middle. It should be 80% of America should say, we want something different. So that's why I thought there was going to be a red wave. <laughs> <laughs> but, you, you, but you know the irony. You, you're right, Beard. You know the irony. If we did it in a way you're thinking about doing it, you didn't say this, but a popular vote, Mm -hmm. Democrats would have won in 2000. Democrats would have won in 2016 also. I like the Electoral College. I'm a minority of like four people in the Democratic Party yeah. that like it. Because I actually think it enables what you kind of were talking against there, but I think you may be for. Because if not, Democrats <laughs> would win every time. <laughs> you see how he did that? Yes, yeah. very good, yeah. Harold. Can, can you tell me we got the shirt? I'm going to get my son one, too. <laughs> 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 you know what? It's good to be back around the table. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.